Good afternoon everyone, so today we're at a Renault Scenic It's a DCI model and it's 2015 So this is the Renault Scenic Mark III So the customer's complaint is Overnight the battery goes flat And I've checked it, it's got about a 3 amp draw When you shut the entire car down So we've done a scan so ECM, a DTC, preheating unit diagnostic connection to internal component failure. Now, it could be the diagnostic, it could be the glow plug preheating unit, but that's usually a glow plug. So we'll note that. ABS, computer power supply, and invalid UCH multiply signal. The airbag SRS, computer supply voltage and vehicle speed multiply its information. Now this will be because it's running down overnight. The UCH, the, the 12 volt access feed number 1 relay circuit and the access feed number 3 relay circuit, yeah, that's an unusual code. The parking brake under voltage vehicle speed ABS multiplexed and unidentified electrical fault. So you'd imagine that's back to the UCH. Power supply issue, the UPC permanent supply circuit, open circuit short to earth, battery disconnection signal incorrect, UPC alternator link invalid. Now it's had a new alternator put on it, but uh, you can see the alternator's charging fine at the moment. Actually this is a smart alternator and when they actually initially started you were only getting 12.66 volts. So you had to take it a run to get it to kick in. So start stop, circuit invalid, battery current sensor communication disrupted. And everything else has got a clean bill of health. So what I would thought would do, clear out the codes and take it a run. So. As you can see, our dashboard is on. So we'll, cl we'll clear the DTCs. Yes. So out of all these codes, one of them will be what the draw is. And it's usually that UCH. I think it's usually the problem with these things. If I'm right in saying it, I think it's the one under, it's a fancy fuse box underneath the hood. So we'll clear out these codes. Right, we've cleared out the codes. And what I'd actually had to do was go into them individually and clear them out. It wouldn't do them as a clear all codes, but never mind. So I could not clear out the UCH. I can guarantee that's where the problem is. So DTC957 Alpha 14 plus access feed number 3 relay circuit. So let's go into this module. There's all the gubbins there. Uh, read the DTC. So whatever that means. Uh, read data stream so we'll select all don't know what I'm looking for but just love a look so 1, 2 and 3 they're all active they're all active no card normal card normal yes yes released pressed missing horn control pressed well So, so the UCH is like a body control module. So let's go back. So it's, we were complaining about, was it number three? VDTC, active. So feed number three relay circuit. So feed number three. So let's select them all again and watch feed number three when I turn the ignition off. So, ignition off, says it's still active, but when I pull the key it probably kill the whole thing. No, no change, we need, did that move there then now? Key out. Just let's wait and see if they move to an active state and then we'll probably lose communication. Yeah. 
Let's try starting it again. So that went deactivated then active. But you've seen that number three never done that, so. So let's do it again. Crank it over. So he goes active. Let's take it on. So I give it a five minute drive and you see the only one it comes back is in the UCH. So what we'll do, we'll stop starter and see if she's the only one it comes back. In fact, we'll go out and lock her. Let's pull this out and go out and lock it and see what we get. As I say to you, there's a three amp draw and I believe that's the, that's the guy there. So that's the car being locked. I put the latch down there. So indeed, it should be going to sleep shortly. So you can see her draws there is four amps. So you've got, let's give it five minutes and see if it calms down, but I don't think it will. The other day, I think it went to 3.75 amps. So we've got some maxi fuses in here. And I believe, although I'm not sure, I think maybe this is the UCH. So we can certainly check these wires going in there. The other place is, I think there's fuses or something along the back there. And also in the passenger side is a fuse box, but I don't think that's a UCH. Now, there's a lovely view over Falkirk. And legend has it at the Battle of Falkirk, William Wallace stood up here, just the next village, Wallace Stone, and looked at the battle. And that's when we were gubbed by the English. So this is not a happy place for us Scots. Anyway, the sheep are quite happy. Before I move my amps clamp into there, I just thought I'd get the thermal imager out. You can see that we've got a hot, oh, got a hot relay down there. So there is only one, that blue relay, so. We'll test what's going into this box first and then we'll pull that relay after a couple of minutes, but you can see that's got a heat signature. I may be wrong, this may not be a UCH. Because look at that, that is negligible going into that wire. So we need to find out where our UCH is. It's hardly anything, so that's not a problem. Maybe the best place to attack is down here. But let's pull this relay and see if that gets rid of three amps. Right, so we've still got three amps at the battery. And I, try, I even tried these wires, it's not that, so I don't think it is this. So let's pull this relay. And we'll watch these figures. No, that never made any difference. Really is in hand. So after locking it and leaving it for 10 minutes, we've got two codes came back. So with that, we've still got the access feed really number three circuit and the UPCs complain about a battery disconnection signal incorrect. Don't know if that's anything to do with me pulling the fuse box. I haven't a clue. Now I've managed to clear that code. So that's the first time ever. So let's lock the car again and see if it comes back. I've stripped out this front bit where the... I don't know if this is a UPS or... Oh, I can't remember the names of things. <laughs> I'm confused. So you can see here we've still got a, that three amps is there. So I'll go and lock this car. That's the car locked. I can't stay in this too long because it jumps about the place so let's leave it and I'll try and not move and see if it comes down. So indeed that one stays high and I was sitting here with the alarm activated. It's not hard to see. So so as you can see, that is a wire down there. It's a big thick wire. It goes into this blue multi-plug. So whatever this goes to, it goes underneath the car. So, I mean, that is heavy duty wiring. So I need to find out what that feeds. In fact, let's disconnect it and see if it's affected. So I've disconnected it and let's see if it's affected. Let's see if I can lock the car or whatever. So it's it's not the cent it's not the central locking. Let's see if the car starts. So it doesn't affect the dashboard. So 
she still starts so I don't know what that multi-plug's all about let's see if our lights come on still got lights is that what it is? So let's see if it's electric handbrake. No. Yeah. Let's see. I've disconnected it. I mean that's doing that. It's got a black white, well, it's two reds going in, but it's a black and a red at the bottom. See that, right? So what we've we done, we scanned it with disconnected, then we scanned it again with connected, and it made no difference. So it's not feeding a module, so I don't know what that's feeding. I need to go and find out. See, I've only got 13 systems, no codes present. So, what could it be feeding? Somebody thought about the, the electric handbrake, but it's not that, because... It's working, no bother. So we're going to leave it disconnected overnight. And I'm sure it will start in the morning, but... My mate thinks the wire actually heads across this way to the, <coughs> the driver's side. Unless it's the HVAC control. No, oh, it was working fine. Well, there's a big... Oh, here. Uh, there's, there's a red and black wire going into this thing. So with disconnecting that multi-plug, the blue multi-plug, you can see that we're now down to 1.59 amps, 1.6, so we've got to give it five minutes, and we should be under 100 milliohms. Milliohms? Milliamps with this thing. So there we go. 45, or there we go, even lower. 17, 19. Beautiful. Cars went to sleep. Data. Now, this is a, a bit difficult to work out us being Scots and the wiring diagram being in French. So, here's what we could find. Down the bottom here, BE, blue. You like that? Blue. Blue, for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's the only blue connector we can see. So, it's a two pin, and it comes up for the bulkhead at the back of the battery, but I can't access that because it's covered with a plastic cover it's impossible to remove so it's a 30 amp a 70 amp and it comes down through this blue connector and it feeds that really there 1068 and 1067 that really there so these relays are for the thermal plungers thermal plunger rod you could disconnect them because half the time these thermal plungers don't work anyway that used to be on the old Renaults they look like glow plugs going into the water jacket so it'll just be to heat the car up quicker so the only way that the thermal plunger could be stuck on, it has to be either this or this. And maybe that's what that active relay code is. No sure. But uh, there's other wiring connectors. Uh, that's black noir. And well, I've reached the end of my French here, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> but there we go. The diagram so, of this relay system. And I think this is more like ours. So we have this big fuse that I can't get access to. It then comes into the blue connector, which they call R444. We agree with that, that seems to be the only blue connector. It then goes through this here, 597. You know, that kind of looks like a fuse arrangement, but I'm not sure. But that's just straight in and out. And then it feeds into 1067, 1068 and 1069. So these are relays that then go to these thermal plungers, like glow plugs. And then you've got that black cable coming off the back, which is your earth, what they call Mac. So we're pulling three amps, and then Roddy and myself are just discussing this. Why would it pull three amps? Now, these things will take more than three amps at 300 watts. But, uh, will they? No, what will they? They'll take 25 amps. Uh, 300 watts takes 25 amps. So there's no way one of them is pulling three amps. So it must be something internal within these relays it's pulling three amps and usually when it shuts a gate on a relay like this bit here the, the magnetic but that only pulls under an amp in fact it only pulls under 100 milliamps usually so we're wondering just maybe something sticking here in a relay another thing we're wondering we got a code for relay active three so 
I think we're onto something here that the, the dash, the, the middle console needs stripped out to get to, if these are individuals, or they're maybe part of a, a board, I do not know. So this is the next again day, and indeed last night, uh, this morning, sorry, with that disconnected, uh, the car started no problem. So you see the, the code that came back, the DTC038096, preheating unit diagnostic connection internal component failure. So I believe that is the, the preheater for the coolant system. So the customer's quite happy just to leave that uh, disconnected at the moment because summer's coming in. And really, I don't think it's going to affect it too much because the water usually does the heating, uh, the, the HVAC, let's say. So I think the heater will get up to temperature. But there's some failure within that unit down at the side here. I'll show you. But that must be what's sticking it on. So I don't know. It must be an integrated circuit within it or whatever. No really sure. But heads for using the thermal plunger, which these are. So thermal plunger two, number one, and uh, number three. So I'll show you a bit. We believe it goes in here and goes into a fuse somewhere along the line. So. And then up to these three bits there. And I think that's the earth one there. If it plug back in, you can see it's pulling 30 amps. So let's do this test. Even with this code, and see if we can get it to go up higher. So read the actuation test. So go, let's go number one. Let's see if we go any higher. So we're still at 30 at the moment. Uh, so, okay. Never made any difference. So let's go number two. Come on, never made any difference to our amperage. And let's go number three. Is there a number three? I thought it was a number three. There we go. So you can see we're still at 30 amps. Okay. So let's put... So we're still pulling 30 amps, 28 amps. So we're slowly going down. So let's activate one of the thermal plungers. So I'll do number one. Command in progress. Never made any difference. So we're doing all these tests, they never made any difference. So you see we're still staying at 8 amps. So we'll put the key off. Have a look. Oh, the gap. a long while to go down. So it's still sticking at five amps here. And that's where the engine shut down, so if I move, the alarm will go off soon. There we go. Anyway, we're leaving it at that. 